Kyle here uh, with my WrestleMania 29 review. Yeah, WrestleMania. Okay, I'll just get right down straight down to business. Um, first match opening up is the six man tag match with Orton, Sheamus, and yeah, I said it right. And Big Show going up against the Shield. Um, absolutely, I uh, thought this was a, a great match. Glad the Shield won. Um, but the crowd was 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 pretty behind uh, the Shield, in, in my opinion. I thought they were they were behind the Shield. You know, Randy got his little cheers and stuff too. But um, Big Show not really turning um, on 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 his teammates to cause them to lose, but just pretty much just sat there because uh, Orton and Sheamus were tagging each other in, but they wouldn't tag in Big Show. So Big Show got a little hissy fit, and yeah, when Orton got panned he didn't do anything so he just threw a temper you know you don't take me in the match i'm gonna cost you it <laughs> um yeah but uh i thought this was a good opening match to start off the show at least it wasn't a world title match like they did for two straight years in a row um what else happened uh next match after that was uh big show versus not i mean mark henry versus ryback uh crowd was dead on this match um, nothing really special coming out of here. Uh, surprised that Ryback lost. Was definitely expecting them to win, uh, considering his pay-per-view streaks. Um, he's just been like on a losing tear. Um, Mark Henry beats him. He wins, and then when Mark Henry comes in to try to destroy Ryback some more, Ryback gets up, picks him up, and does the shell shock. And Ryback standing tall, which to me makes no sense, because it's like. If you're going to have Ryback standing tall and be the last man standing, why would you have him lose? Like, this was their chance to take Ryback and kind of, like, boost him back up after they've, after he's been, you know, digressed, I should say, for the past couple of months. This is their chance to boost him up and, you know, boost him back up to the top. And he lost at WrestleMania. But he showed that he could lift Mark Henry doing a shell shock. But yet, he still lost. Um, whoever booked that was just... That was terrible. So, it's safe enough to say. Right back right now, his push and where he's going to go. Or what WWE had, had planned for him to go. Is going to be derailed for another about 8 months. And then, they'll press the restart button on it again. And he'll have a streak or something. Um, after that, we got a tag match. Team Hell No defending the tag team titles against Big E Langston. And uh, Double Ziggler. Um... Decent match, not bad. Uh, that was a pretty decent tag match. Uh, Biggie Langston was dominant, looking strong for the little time that he was in the ring. Uh, loved the spot they did with uh, AJ uh, kissing uh, Dolph Ziggler in the beginning of the match, and then uh, Daniel Bryan attacked Ziggler, and it looks like he was about to get uh, a quick victory, uh, playing off what Bryan and Sheamus did last year at WrestleMania. So I thought that was cool. So that was probably my favorite spot during the match. Um, but uh, definitely not a bad tag match. Um, Ziggler got pinned. They lost. Uh, so, Team Elno, still tag team champions. Um, Brian was probably the most over guy that night. The crowd was hot. I mean, everybody was just doing like a yes chance. So I, I thought that was cool. I'm like, you see WWE? You see? You see? Brian is over. Now split him and Kane up. Um, so, a lot of people were wondering, like, what's next for Team Elno since they've beaten Ziggler and Big E? My thing is, I think Shield. Uh, can be tag team champions. I don't know what, what what you guys thoughts on that. I mean, Shield have won every tag match. They've beaten everybody, all the big baby faces in, in the WWE. Why not have them be the tag team champions and then just have them like rotate, um, you know, just rotate the members and and defending uh, the the tag titles. They can do that. Um, that's something that had it has been done before, but not in the last ten years. So. It'll be something old but new to the current generation of wrestling fans. So uh, I th I say have Shield be tag champs. Um, moving on from that, we got uh, Chris Jericho versus Fandango. Uh, Fandango is not a bad wrestler. Um, a, a lot of people say he kind of held his own to me. I don't know if it's just me, but to me, I felt like. Jericho had more of an offense compared to Fandango. I think it was a little bit more one-sided. I think uh, Fandango got more beat up than Jericho. Um, but Jericho, like, tweaks his leg. Fandango does his uh, 
you know, um, rolls him up in, in a small package almost, um, and uh, gets the victory over on Jericho. Um, so, yeah, Fandango won his first WrestleMania match debut. Um, I'm looking forward to see what, what WWE has planned for him, um, you know, for him to debut at WrestleMania and go up against uh, Jericho. It'll be interesting to see what they what they have for uh, Disco Inferno slash Johnny Nitro. Um, next match we got after this, um, was it the world title match? Yeah, the world title match. Uh, the world title match, you had, uh, Alberto De Rio versus Jack Swagger. This match was alright, I mean, uh, a match I, I would say you could probably see on a, any Raw, SmackDown main event. Um, the crowd wasn't really into it. Um, Del Rio won, he retains. I was crossing my fingers, I'm like... Ziggler, 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 Ziggler. No Ziggler. No cash in. I'm like, come on, WWE. I was waiting for Ziggler. Walk down that aisle, cash in the briefcase, and become a new world champion. That didn't happen at all. Which sucks, monkey balls. In a way, I kind of glad they didn't do it because Ziggler's been on a losing streak for like the last four months. So, kind of defeat the purpose of the cash in after being on such a losing streak for months. But that's why I said. They should have kept Ziggler hot during the entire time he had that Money in the Bank briefcase, especially within the last three to four months going into WrestleMania, so that when he did cash in this year, it would have just been great. But uh, Ziggler didn't cash in, so whatever. Uh, next match we got after that, after the world title match, we got into Brock Lesnar versus uh, Triple H. Um, no holes barred. Uh, this match was much better than their, than their match at Extreme Rules. Uh, I mean, SummerSlam last year. Uh, they threw everything but the kitchen sink at each other. Uh, nothing really special, uh, I mean, coming out of it. I mean, Triple H is still an active wrestler. I don't know why the WWE keeps adding these stipulations of retirement. Um, we've had so many retirement stipulations in the last, like, year. It's ridiculous. I mean, we've had uh, uh, Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace, like... Um, loses a match, he gets fired, which he got fired, um, which is the same thing as close to being retirement anyway, you can't work anymore, um, plus has some retirement match, uh, Shawn Michaels had a retirement match like two years ago, and it's just, uh, anyway, um, Triple H, pedigree, Brock Lesnar on the steel steps, wins, um, yeah, I didn't expect Triple H to lose anyway, but whatever, um, I was, at the edge of my seat, I'm like, please, when when Tri Triple H had Brock Lesnar and the Kimura Clutch, I'm like, please do not tell me Brock Lesnar's going to tap out. Because I know WWE, they love to do stuff where they like to have their wrestlers, you know, to like outshine any predominant sport and, you know, all that other stuff. And make a spectacle of, of every other sport. So I'm like, please do not tell me they're going to have a wrestler make a UFC fighter tap out to a UFC submission move. The I mean, I'm like, please don't tell me they're going to do this with the Kimura Clutch. And thank God they didn't do that. They teased it enough, but thank God it didn't happen. Uh, next match we got after this was um, John Cena versus The Rock for the WWE Championship. Yeah. Uh, was this match better than the first? I say so. I think it had, it had better, probably, probably had better spots, I, I would guess, I'd say. Then the first match, I think it was a step up from it. Um, but not saying much. Um, I did a lot of reversals. Um, there were some some spots I did like, though. Like with uh, Rock mocking um, the You Can't See Me doing what Cena did last year and doing the People's Elbow and Cena, like, you know, end up taking advantage of that and doing his AA. And then Cena ended up doing the repeat of what he did last year of about to do the People's Elbow and catches rocks off guard and says hi I tricked you and that was cool little moments like that was cool spots but my god there was like what 50 finishers on that entire last ladder match i mean in the last ladder of the match i mean like 10 rock bottoms eight attitude adjustments and each move is being kicked out i mean wow i mean wow uh, <laughs> yeah um, so at the end of the day, it looked like Rock was gonna, you know, win, but then John Cena gets the AA, and it's your new WWE Champion. So he's an 11-time record-breaking WWE Champion, 
13-time world champion altogether when you count in his two world titles. Um, yeah, so John Cena's champ again. We all expected it. We all knew it. So no need to be disappointed about it. I do think, however, though, um, I thought it was funny that they were doing like the sportsmanship thing, like John Cena and, and John Cena and, and uh, The Rock shaking each other's hands and stuff, and like Cena showing mad respect to to The Rock. I'm like, are they doing a code of honor here from ROH? They're shaking hands at the end of the match. I'm like, what the hell is this? Um, you know, a lot of people say you know John Cena's a great guy, and you know he gives respect to the, to, to to the veterans. Yes, John Cena always does that. He's a goody boy scout when he gives, you know, props to, you know, to the veterans and whatnot. But I hate it when he does that because John Cena always does that to divert the heat off of him when people don't like him. He knows people don't like him and they boo him. It happens every single time. When, when John Cena gets booed or when people say Cena sucks, he always diverts the heat and the attention off himself by mentioning the legend. One of the greatest of all time, Ric Flair, 16-time world champion. You know, or give it up for Shawn Michaels, Mr. WrestleMania. You know, or The Rock is the most electrified man in all of sports and entertainment. I hate it when he does that because he does it purposely just to divert heat. A lot of people say, oh, he's giving his respect. And that's fine to give your respect to your veterans and your elders and whatnot. But I think he does it intentionally to divert heat off of himself. I'm like, seeing I see that right through you. So I think that's why he did that because you look at the crowd. A few people in the front, they were cheering. But when they um, when they replayed Cena going in for the pin, beating The Rock and pinning him one two three uh, on the one replay shots when it was zoomed out, the people in the front row they were cheering. You go back three or four rows after that and looking up at, in a higher and and around the other parts of the arena, nobody was cheering. Nobody was up how hooping how in their seats. You saw like maybe like five three or five people in Cena gear jumping up you know further back in the arena. But nobody else was jumping and hooping and hollering over Cena. They were just like, no reaction, like literally. And so I think that's probably why they had John Cena to give props to The Rock, walk out of the ring and walk up the ramp instead of having him being, you know, the center focus there that moment at WrestleMania winning the match because they knew Cena was going to get some heat. Um, it was just inevitable. So I think WWE did that purpose, staged the whole thing so that, you know, Cena won't get a lot of booze and heat. So you had that there. Then now we get on to the main event. CM Punk versus The Undertaker. The main event match. Um, this was phenomenal. Um, right off the bat, I said going in, I'm like, this is going to be the best match on the card. And it was. It delivered. Living Color performed live for CM Punk. That was awesome. They sounded great. It sounded like they didn't skip a beat. Um, the psychology, the storytelling that both Undertaker and Punk told in this in, in this match was great. In my opinion, it's probably the only storytelling match that they had uh, in WrestleMania um, on, the, on the entire show. Um, they told the story, um, the psychology, Punk doing old school and you know mimicking Undertaker and doing the um, the reversals off of each other, uh, just. Great, great match. Uh, definitely, I will put this on the top five best matches of of CM Punk's career in the WWE. Uh, Undertaker, to me, he Taker was 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 great. Uh, Taker, to me, he moved around like he was in better physical condition this year than I would say last year and the year before um, at WrestleMania when he was going back to back against Triple H. He seemed like he was in a much better physical shape. Um, really, really good stuff. And for all those people that were, te you know, who were making fun, saying CM Punk is the short, is a midget. He's the shortest guy that Undertaker uh, ever faced at WrestleMania as a WrestleMania opponent. He's a midget, you know, making all those ridicules and jokes and stuff like that. And they tore the house down and they had the best match on the entire freaking card. So that's for all you haters out there who made those comments and PM'd me that stuff. Um, so Undertaker wins, streak still intact. Um, so yeah, that's it for WrestleMania. Um, I, I thought it was I thought it was better than, than last year. Um, it was better than last year, but nothing really to me exciting comes out of this pay per view. Like I said, it's a step up from last year, but nothing really exciting comes out of here. I mean, the only thing that comes out of here is John Cena's being champ, which we already knew was going to happen anyway. But 
that's uh, that's 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 nothing new there. Um, nothing new and nothing exciting. So the fallout on Raw tonight, the only thing we're gonna get is John Cena, new WWE champ, and some new side plates on the on the belt. That's it. Um, so you guys give me your opinions on WrestleMania, the matches. Did you like it? Did uh, what you did or didn't like? Oh, and Miz won the Intercontinental Championship on a pre-show against Wade Barrett. Funny, he headlined WrestleMania two years ago as the, as the WWE Champion. Now he's on the pre-show. My, how the mighty have fallen. Give me your thoughts in the box below. Subscribe. Peace.